My work has been called, in a funny sort of way, like the really good group show by one person. The color mixing that happens actually happens in your eye. What happened to my microscope set? What happened to my samurai helmet that I had when I was born from Japan? Wendy, can you give us a brief description of your works in this show? I don't consider myself a painter, but an object maker. So even though the works are flat and they hang on the wall, they kind of land somewhere between painting and sculpture. They sit off the wall. They're made with neon acrylic, which throws a color on the wall. And then I paint them with encaustic. And I'm playing with different form languages, pattern. I like to juxtapose different kind of shape languages. And this most recent group amused me. I would put these different form languages together and it would make me smile. So then I started naming them things that would let the viewer know it was okay to be amused. And John, you have the second story of the gallery full of work, but it is part of multifaceted. So when Caroline very wonderfully invited me to be a part of the gallery to do something with her, I suggested that instead of me doing everything, that I'd love to take the upper floor, do a concentrated body of work that I actually asked her to curate, and that she and I would co-curate into multifaceted. And in multifaceted down here, we co-curated in the sense there were artists that she already knew, and we put them together with artists she didn't know, and we did it in such a way that we we're hoping to enlarge the, the community that was a part of Do Thinking Fine Art. But then for my show, um, Caroline, I said, would you please choose it? Because I'm always being a curator, and I really wanted somebody else to see how they would edit it, so to speak. So when she was talking about it, which is the time that I learned how she edited it, she was talking about how she was drawn to the way in which in different bodies of work, there's about four bodies of work up there, maybe actually five, that I'm very interested in location, in a geophysical place that I've had a specific experience about, and the way that I create these rather complex visual puzzles that are about my way of deciphering my relationship over time to those places in those times. My work has been called, in a funny sort of way, like the really good group show by one person. But there's a process underneath it, and I, I think it was really interesting that that's the part that was localized by Carolyn. She felt that these, even one's more of like a sculptural map of sites that I would go to in Pasadena. Another one's more of a painterly and sculptural foray into a land where I was born, Japan, but through my father's slides, which he took before I was born. So there's a relationship. And then I was only there till I was like four. So my experience of Japan is really quite distant. So these are the kinds of things um, that are on view. They're kind of individually broken down into these different, I would call them little tricks. Let's talk about your process, how you actually create these works. Um, Wendy, you're working with you're cutting these with a... Uh, they're laser cut. Laser cut. So but that's not, that's not where I start. I first okay. start with research. And um, I'm interested in pattern. Um, the grid patterns... I had an aunt who passed away and I inherited, quote, the contents of her break front. And she lived in New York City and collected all kinds of stuff. And there was a big stack of travel books that were all published before World War I, and they had these incredible maps of all of these different European cities. And I found myself fascinated with them, and they were very beautiful. So I, um, I scanned them, and then I traced them in Illustrator. Then I began to play with it and turn it into a repeating pattern, because I wanted to evoke this sense of a city grid but I didn't want it to be any identifiable city. Mm -hmm. And also it reinforced that notion of a pattern. But I also do other, I'm interested in other kinds of uh, decorative motifs from uh, European wall paintings, which is where those circular forms come from. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in science kinds of things like protozoa and see life, and I'm always looking in books. And just something will catch me and uh, speak to me, 
And then I'll do this thing where I'll either trace it directly or I'll manipulate the form in some way. And it's with that that I then laser cut these things out of plexiglass. The neon plexi, I think it's kind of a garish material. And I didn't want the material to be seen all that much. I just wanted to use that glowing part of it that spoke to me. So I painted the surface with gesso, which heightened that reflection of pink on the wall. And then I paint them with encaustic. So the color mixing that happens actually happens in your eye mm -hmm. um, because there's this pink that is behind everything. And part of the difficulty of working with this material is that you can't, you don't have an open range of what you can use. There are some things that I'll put it on the surface, I'll go, oh. And um, then you have to kind of work your way back. You mean some things when you're talking, when you say things, you have a, a color? color? A color, a <laughs> color. If you put red on that surface, it just dies, mm -hmm. it disappears. John, can you talk about your variety of different mediums up there? Sure. A lot of my work, starts with the maps, but they're quite different maps than having them already drawn. And the maps are generally things that I, I'm dwelling upon from the past. And I was talking to somebody when I was in Italy most recently about what it's like to be a child who's in a military family and moving from place to place to place to place, and every time losing things. And I was telling, and they said, what, did you do anything about that? I said, yeah, I used to have these places in each house where I kind of hid things that I didn't want to lose. And then I thought, huh, I wonder if I could reconstruct those nooks, these like little places and maybe make them into a, a skeletal line-like structure. So I went ahead and tried to imagine how I could do it with line drawings in space, so they're little small square tubes. And then I made an artifact that was made out of a two-part epoxy that hardens over time. You can work it for about three or four hours and you can sand it and paint it. And the things were actually things like chotskis and notebooks and books or photographs. These are things that you didn't want other people to find or take I didn't want to lose them. I was tired uh -huh. of losing things. You have these huge shipping containers and you get to the next house and be like, what happened to my microscope set? What happened to my samurai helmet that I had when I was born from Japan? All these things just leave. And so I use nooks as a, as a kind of a little hiding place. But it, but it isn't meant to be revelatory of the things that once were there. It's meant to be a new experience, my way of but sort of reliving it, recreating it, but not staying faithful to the original source. Can you talk a little bit about your process in the studio and how, how you work, how you choose to work in these different materials? Yeah, I'm very lucky I have a big studio. And so I always used to say that I keep three to five rings open, three to five rings like a circus. One of the circus rings was just starting, one was halfway through, another one was done, another one was overcooked, the other one was a discard. And I would try to move through these. These um, are three different bodies of work or three different? They're three different bodies of work. Mm -hmm. When I do a series, I take all, let's say, 14 images. I do one process, all 14. Then I go back to the next process, all 14. So I work in these sequences. And that's my way of also juggling my life because up until recently, I've been a freelancer. I had a family and I have friends and I live up intercontinentally between the United States and Italy. So the juggling required that there be some ability to, to, to go back and pick things up where they were. Is that the kind of answer you're looking for? Uh, there's no perfect answer, right? <laughs> well, if there was, I didn't have it. <laughs> so I know that you both have um, uh, an interest in writing and practice writing. Do, do you, is there any connection between your writing and the creation of form for you? That's an interesting question. I once had uh, a studio visit from another artist who said that the way I conceptualize the work is by pushing it through some kind of language, that it has a, it's a visual poetic, but it is a poetic. So I guess in some sense, yes. John does art writing. I don't do art writing. I, I wrote a novel, um, which was a lot of fun. And I do like the notion of poetics and there's a visual poetic and there's a, a literary poetic, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And what do you do when you go to the studio? 
What do I do? Yeah. Well, it's good to have works in different stages of production. So if I'm at a loss with one, I just go work on something else. I think it's my process that in order for me to really move to the next level, I have to have some kind of experience where I just, I, you know, I just feel like my heart is broken. Uh-huh. And that I'm never, I'm never going to figure it out. And um, so I often have days when I'm in there, it's like, oh, this is terrible. And, and then one day I do something and I go, oh. And it's like a door opens. And it's like, I know what I'm doing now. And then I will make three or four or five pieces of work all in a row. Easiest thing I've ever done in my life, right? And then you get to a place where, uh uh-oh, this is that piece that's going to break my heart again. And and I'm realizing that if you don't, if you don't work through that piece, like if you don't hit that wall and push through it, you're, you're going to repeat yourself. Well, John, um, can you talk a little bit about your personal relationship to being so multifaceted. Yeah, I mean, I think it takes a while for people to understand who they are and then eventually to embrace who they are. It just took me a long time to figure out what it means to be American and Italian, educated in Italy, but working in the United States, from Los Angeles. And at the end, I decided that I wasn't gonna keep these different pieces in different places and sort of hide them one from the other. So when I, had them. I've had people tell me, you, you can't curate and be an artist. You can't write and curate. You, and so, you know, you just tell them, mm-hmm. and they also told me I couldn't have children and be an artist. And I was like, yeah, well, that didn't work out to your head, you skin. It worked out just fine for mine. <laughs> and everybody gets to choose how they deal with being multifaceted. I mean, I think the question is fine for me, but it's also like, you know, Wendy, how do you balance being multifaceted? Do you tell everybody what you do, all the things? Um, I just sort of do one thing at a time. You know, like, and when I focus on it, I focus on it. And uh, when I was writing the novel, I actually didn't work in my studio. I didn't make visual art. That my creative output was uh, writing. Um, and so, you know how like there are certain people who are serial monogamists. So I think creatively, that's who I am. I, I like to focus on one thing at a time. But I remember you telling me somebody from the writing group that you were in came up to said, "You make art too." <laughs> because they didn't know. They didn't know that. And someone said, what do you mean you work at Art Center? Oh, I direct a department. So that's the thing about, and, and you don't want the world to have to know everything, but it's not, not, it's neither my responsibility to have them know everything, nor is it my responsibility to hide anything. I just continue to do the things I do and try to show up and do them as competently or as, or as po- poetically as possible. That, that's, the, that's the goal that I have set. But I think that the exhibition and the response so far has been that people really look at it and say, what a wonderful pluralistic community. What a, what a wonderful set of ways of being really serious and really competent and really engaged and how different these things are one from the other.